right. What's up? Well, welcome to the B Varsity Scoreboard Show. I'm Zach Ewing with Trevor Horn, and we are wrapping up a late night of high school football. We meant to have this on at 11:15, but that's what happens when you have three hour, three hour and five yeah. minute games, and it I starts at 7:45. Thinking so. the Garces parking lot until about 11:10. So this is the this is the earliest we can get on, but uh, it it is. Week one, it is complete. Well, it's not complete, but Friday night's complete. We've got a Friday couple of big games complete. tomorrow night. Holy cow, what a night. Too, Bakersfield man. and Pleasant Grove and Centennial and St. Bonaventure tomorrow night. But, uh, look, score of the night is the game you were at. Yes. Stockdale beating up on – not just beating up, no, beating, beating them by two on, touchdowns. Yeah, absolutely incredible performance. When you look at Stockdale, well, first off, Ridgeview, not having Damone DeGraff and Reed or Jalen Prevost in the lineup tonight in street clothes because they got suspended for school disciplinary actions hurts because it was – because – Prevost is one of the top receivers in the section, and he's also starting in the secondary, as is DeGraffenry. But then when you when you add in do-it-all-everything senior, Jamar Moya getting thrown out of the game with seven minutes left in the first quarter because he threw a punch, uh, that is a dagger for you. That takes yeah. three legitimate all-area starters out of your secondary and give it to Jacob Ruley and the entire Stockdale team and Brett Shelton's staff. They – Game plan for it. It was an 8-7 Ridgeview lead at the half. Really came out in the first three drives of the second half. Went three for four for 54 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, amazing. I mean, and he just picked apart three different receivers. Elijah Ortiz, like we've talked about for so long, one of the top running backs in the central section. He goes for 102 yards, two touchdowns. He had the long one in the first half. I mean, he just broke it up on fourth and long and just broke it up to the left side and – showed what happens when you miss speedsters like DeGraff and Reed and Prevost in the secondary because he went right by now, I will say this. I will secondary. say this. If you are a number one team in the section, you can put up with losses like that yeah. and win anyway. Unless, unless, and this is certainly a possibility too, Stockdale is much better than we thought. Yeah. And you said they look good. I do want to ask before we got to move on, but, but before we move on to the next game, uh, describe the play briefly in which Jamar Moy gets ejected because okay. that's obviously so. Key from too. my standpoint, and I did ask Ridgeview coaching staff kind of what happened at halftime. Basically, the play is one of those where he gets balled up right at the line of scrimmage, starts taking a couple steps back, and you're thinking, okay, blow the whistle. No whistle is blown, and I'm going to harp on the referees. This is their fault. No whistle is blown. Four more yards, and nothing's blown. Two more yards. He's eight yards behind the line of scrimmage. Finally, a whistle is blown, and all the while. It's good defense, but he's getting the everything punched at him. Now Moya was not smart by throwing. Trying, punch trying at him. to punch the ball out. Trying to th- that's what yeah, Stockton's doing is trying yeah, to get the ball defense, out. Smart defense, punching the ball out. Finally, the whistle's called. One more punch comes in. He he's finally motions fed it up. Out. And, yeah. He's finally fed up. He throws a punch. Thirty yards. He's tossed. So they had like fourth and thirty-three. And they couldn't get in a rhythm after that. When you lose a guy like Jamar Moya, and you know what? He's a level-headed kid. He's a good kid. He's smart. He's a great student. Yeah, and it's easy to say. And, well, and I think you but should be you said he should keep so, his head in that situation. But kid, they, they're no, kids. No, you, you do need they're to kids. Keep, they're yeah. kids, and you do need to keep your cooler head. You can't throw a punch, even as upset as you are. And, that's and a dagger. By the way, I, I don't want to take anything away from Stockdale, okay? No, they won no, the no, game. no, no, no. They, they won, won the, game, the game. And they played it. And they I'm dominated you, the game. Both teams took forever to come out of the half, out of the locker room, going into the third quarter. Ridgeview took longer. But whatever happened in that Stockdale locker room was a game changer because they retooled and they went at the secondary of Ridgeview because they had a couple sophomores back there. And Jacob Ruley, first-year starter, first time of varsity, a junior, Picked apart that defense, found three different receivers for touchdowns. Absolutely incredible performance. And he even said, like a good quarterback, he goes, listen, my line gave me time yep. after the half, yep. and I was able to pinpoint some passes, complete some passes, and we won, and we won this game. Yeah, so and, congratulations and, and to the Stockdale Mustangs. And really, for Brett Shelton, a Stockdale alum, for him to be able to finally get this signature win at his alma mater, congratulations, Brett. Yeah, and, and what a win for Stockdale, and they will be on our Game of the Week on Bakersfield.com, 7 o'clock next Friday night against Independence. Have fun with that one. That's a good team. So that, that will be fun. And Independence, by the way, we'll go through to all, through all, through to all the scores. I've been talking for a long time tonight. Uh, but North takes down Independence tonight. You call that would be a close game, 24-14, to 14, as you see there. The Stars over the Falcons. Dustin Reed with an 85-yard touchdown run the play of that game. Uh, moving on. To some more scores here, and and I know, yeah, let's go from the yeah, top. We'll go from the top. The game I was at with John, 
Uh, Garces all over Bakersfield. Christian, 44 to 21. Connor Bruce, 169 yards passing, 111 yards rushing. Dude. Isaiah Martin, 151 yards rushing. Garces had six touchdowns in this game plus a field goal. Five of the six touchdowns scored within two plays. I got a question before we get to any highlights of this game. What did you think about the grass? I didn't get down there, man. The Dude, game it was in that, play, the that place is incredible. Yeah. Wasn't able to get down there, but it looks very nice. So uh, let's move on. Way to christen it. Yes, yeah, st- we as we mentioned, Stockdale, the big win over previously number one Ridge. You're not gonna be number one anymore. The team that will be number one, we'll get to them here in a second. Uh, it's not Frontier, although they're moving up forty two to six over Cabrillo okay. of Lompo. One of our top ten storylines that we talked about in the preview section, which came out yesterday, was can the bottom half of the SWIL come up? Well, if tonight is any indication, Just look at those yes. first three scores. You look yeah. at Frontier, look at that score. You look at Stockdale beating up on Ridgeview, and you look at Garces taking care of BCHS. Yeah, yeah. Now, Cabrillo was one and nine last year. For, yeah. Maybe they're not very good, but this certainly beats the alternative for Frontier. A nice, easy win to get started against against a team that plays in a good league. So, yep. uh, you know, we'll see what that means for the Titans going forward. But Stockdale, obviously, much improved. Garces might be the most improved team in the section, but. They're all still chasing the Liberty Patriots. New number one. Yeah, they get uh, they get a 45-yard touchdown pass from Bryson Falconer to Johnny Balderas. That sets up the sophomore, Sammy Stewart, nine-yard touchdown Super run. Super sophomore. Liberty goes up uh, 28-24, hey, and you, they hold on to beat Clovis West. That was number one versus number two in the Fresno Bees rankings. Yep. Here you go. Look at Sammy Stewart. Ran all over Clovis West tonight. Great sophomore. Played at uh, Golden Valley last year. We talk about him. Before we get I, – I forget, Keontae Glinton is a superstar. That guy rushed for 126 yards tonight. Once he understands, once he gets Jalen Prevost back there, that's a great young quarterback for Ridgeview. Yeah. So, I mean, we Sophomore do have – Sophomore playing with shorthanded teammates. And, yep. again, and we'll see one, don't take anything away we'll from And we'll see one more but, tomorrow night in yeah. Cam Williams at BHS at 5 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, so, Liberty, they got to keep going. they got a tough schedule. They play a ticked-off Ridgeview team next week that will be – Mostly back at full strength, although Jamar Moya, pending an appeal, will not be able to play after an ejection this week. So uh, moving on, as we mentioned, North over Independence. What a win for the Stars, the young Stars. Very young. Norm Brown getting it done on the road. And again, we'll see Independence next week. Wasco beats Kalinga 28-6. Wasco, that was a close game at halftime. Wasco pulling away in the second half. Uh, Shafter takes down Miramonte. You called that one. But that's a backup quarterback and Tony Escalante going for 235 yards yeah. and three touchdowns. So Gerald Perucci. Gerald Perucci got it going on, yep. and uh, he takes down Miramonte. Congratulations getting your first win at your alma mater, sir. Week one. Highland, they were down 12 to nothing in this game, and then it was all Scots after that. Zeke Arambolo with a couple of touchdown passes. Nice big win for uh, Mike Gutierrez. This is another game that was close at halftime, and then Kennedy pulls away 42-24. to and the two-time defending D6 champions start with a win. Look at Robert Cozine, 262 yards rushing on 17 carries. That's it. Do the math, Trevor. That's 15 yards a carry. Yep. 15 yards a carry yep. over 17 carries. Yep. Taft running all over GV, 47-7. to seven. Can, we, uh, can we start talking about a favorite? Can we start talking about a big game between Kennedy and Taft this year? Kennedy, Taft, Taft maybe BCHS. I don't know. Yeah. You know. They didn't look good tonight on defense, but – Garces looks pretty darn good on yep. defense as well. Man, that Garces team has so many weapons. Do we have more scores to go through? Or are we done? Are we done? Oh, here we oh, go. Yeah, yeah that's no, big one here. More. Cesar Chavez, 14. South, 6. South's only TD, a defensive touchdown. So, Cesar Chavez, man, Jesse Ortega, the defense is still legit up there in Delano. Yep. Uh, again, East defense, man, they get it going. Joe Robinson. Uh, the defense held, holds Delano to 6 points and scores 7 of their own. So even if East offense never took the field, the Blades win this game. <laughs> David Finucchi, only one win last year. They already got uh, one this year. I think you called that one too. I told you you're going to get me back on uh, on uh, predictions this year. Avenel beating McFarland, 16 to nothing. I think you got Liberty too, so you're at least three three for three uh, in the game. We were different. Avenel beating McFarland, 16 to nothing. Look at this score. This is amazing. You know, Desert, it, first game in the central section going up to take on the defending D5 champions on the road. Played them toe-to-toe. Come up short 35-34, but the Scorpions, that's a good program coming into the Central section. Uh, bummer and maybe here. we'll see what Cal City's got. We'll see what Kern Valley's got. But I think uh, Desert may, may have something to say in the HDL race as well. A four fight. That's a typo. I try to take that yeah. one off. It's 11-30. Relax. A four, so anyway, uh, so bummer deal for Frazier Mountain. Obviously, this is a team that only scored one touchdown all last year. Uh, we'll dive in and try to figure yeah, out we're not exactly positive, what we're not. But 
uh, looks like that could have been a forfeit situation. That game was not played, uh, and Fra we know Fraser Mountain's numbers were down, so we're just speculating. Could be that the Falcons uh, have to, and if that's the case, as CIF rule, right? You got to forfeit the season. Yeah, if you, if you miss if one you, game for numbers, that's it. Yep, you're done. So Fraser Mountain could be done. Cal City looking good. That defense, which is a bummer for the entire HDL too, because yeah. that's a game that you miss, and that's the biggest thing. Um, I think uh, Eric Sondheimer for uh, the LA Times talked about that. It's like, you know, you do that, you hurt everybody. Because then everybody's less a game in October when it really means something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and they got to take that extra bye week. Cal mm -hmm. City 30-62 over Desert Christian, staying in the HDL. Uh, Kern Valley, that was a back-and-forth game, a barn burner. And Kern Valley getting it done at Boron 29-26. That's going to be a good little race out in the HDL. Uh, yep. You know, Fraser Mountain obviously doesn't look like they're going to be a part of it, but between Kern Valley, Cal City, and Desert, you got to – and, and throw in Bishop. Bishop's always a factor. Yep. That is a very, very good league race in the High Desert League. And do not have a score from Little Rock and Rosemont. we got one more game, though. Burroughs, Burroughs beating, beating Palmdale. Palmdale. That's a good win for the Burroughs. Yes, it is. To go to Palmdale. Burrow, Burroughs. I think there were a okay. lot of games I feel like I, I said were going to be closer, and they ended up going the other way, like Stockdale Ridgeview. Yeah. But as far as the games we were different on, you wiped the floor with me this week. Three <laughs> for three. You know, I don't. You love doing predictions. I don't really care about them that all that much. <laughs> I do them because that's one of the things that you told me I had to do. Um, what I like about is just, you know, guys playing football and playing with pride, and that's what you saw at a Stockdale. I, I went on the sideline for the last five minutes because, you know, it was 34 to 8 at that point. I was like, I'm going to go downstairs because obviously part of what we have to do is I was like, well, I got just enough time to get a few quotes and I can run back up and stairs and nobody wants to hear about the plight of us. But, you know, that's kind of what we have to do is 1135 game ends. I've got 10 minutes to, you know, finish up the story. 1035. Yeah. yeah. 10 what did I say? 935. You said yeah, 1135. 10, whatever. That's I'm yeah. hungry. I know what you mean. Uh, but anyway, I'm on the sideline with Stockdale and you can just hear on that. There was just this air of just confidence within them, as it should be. That was a fantastic win and kind of cool. Uh, Chad Shelton. Independence baseball coach Brett Shelton's brother on the sideline. Well, and those really two schools, excited. yeah, head to head next week, Stockdale and Independence, and then yep. Stockdale still has a Royal Grande. They still play Clovis High School. Mm -hmm. Could set up for a big non-conference schedule for the uh, Stockdale Mustangs. Uh, well, normally at this time we'd be showing some highlights. I don't think we have any queued up, so no. we're, we're going to have to pass on that tonight. It's late. It's almost midnight. We're going to let you people go. Uh, but a, a great week one, mostly in the books. Again, Trevor, you're going down to Ventura tomorrow. Yeah, I got, a, I got a got a day at the beach planned. Cool. Uh, yeah, okay. We're worried about the football. Bakersfield High and Pleasant <laughs> Grove at 5 p.m. and then Centennial and St. Bonaventure at 8 p.m. So yeah. a couple of SWYL schools trying to get it going there. Really, a very good night for the SWYL. We talked about the bottom half: Frontier spanks Cabrillo, Garces explosive against Bakersfield Christian. And then Stockdale, obviously, with the win of the night. And then Liberty, with the other win of the night, beating And we Clovis use that West. phrase, bottom half, because that's how they finished up last year. But 2016, yeah. that's the great thing about high school sports, is that you really, truly don't know until they finally strap it on and start playing. And, you know, the, the SWIL is going to be very good, very even, very well see, hard yeah. fought all season long. It's going to be, be very, very interesting, interesting to see BHS and Centennial tomorrow to see how they fit into that yeah. picture. Centennial, obviously, with a very tough opponent, but... If they can even hold their own in that game, you figure they're going to be in the SWYL race. Yes. And BHS. Well, they're going to be in it regardless. They're going to be in it regardless. I don't worry about that. Centennial is going to be shorthanded tomorrow night. No Cole Beatty, and that's going to affect them too, and they'll have him back later in the year. And so it's not going to be the same Centennial team you see in league play either. So, uh, hey, it's it's that's been that. a long night for all of us. We are set. Check out the Californian tomorrow. Bakersfield.com has got all the coverage for you. John Farrand, it's been a long night for him. We thank him for all of his work. Yeah, buddy. And our game of the week next week, Stockdale and Independence. Trevor will be back Tuesday with B-Varsity Nightly. You're going to have highlights yep. on Bakersfield.com of BHS and Centennial tomorrow night. Yep, and there will be there are highlights on our YouTube page already, and I will there will be more highlights on the Bakersfield.com from that Stockdale win over Ridgeview. And then we'll have, obviously, more highlights from Garces' win over BCHS. And then we'll have video highlights of both games tomorrow at Ventura College with BHS and Centennial. So we'll have plenty of video for you and, obviously, a lot of you know written content that you can find in tomorrow's California and always online at Bakersfield.com. So for Trevor Horn, I'm Zach Ewing. This has been B Varsity Scoreboard. Zingos. Zingos close at midnight now, bro.